we have two Priuses here, a 2012, a 2009. Both different problems, both air conditioning. So on this one, it came in low on charge, I could tell that. Neither of these Prius, I have never seen these Prius before myself. One way I could tell, my name is not on the cap. I always put my names on the cap if I can, if they're not black. And it's missing my sticker, because on the Prius I usually always put my sticker right here in this little opening with indication that I put Trace UV dye in it before. Both the side glasses were very dirty, meaning they weren't priorly looked at just before they came to me. They had a lot of road debris. I had to swipe them off and clean them. So I knew they weren't recently looked at. Same with this one. I had to clean the sight glass on this one. Uh, this one turned out to be road debris damage. Right down here. And you can see where the oil came out at. And I have nitrogen in it. Let's see. And you can kind of see where the leak is. So it looks like something like a rod or a bolt went through there. You can see the damage right here. So that one was a no-brainer. And over on this one, still looking for the leak, but let's let's use this as a trainer, as a little lesson if you've watched my other videos. Okay. We have negative to somewhere around 1 less than 1 psi of pressure. On the high side, we had 69 psi pressure. If you remember, just the day before yesterday, I released the pre uh, a video on the Prius 2012 Prius C. And the high side pressure when I was driving with remote, because remember I had the Bluetooth gauges on the 2000 Prius C, I was driving down the road and my high side pressure was 66 psi on a full system that was just charged the day before that. Okay, now here we are, another Prius. This is a 2007. The only difference is, is our low side is not at 30 or 28 PSI. But look at the high side. The high side, and this morning is cold. We're only like 57 degrees outside right now. The high side is 69 PSI on a system that probably only has three ounces in it. Now here's another clue. When I hooked up to this car and I hooked my gauges up, I had 42 PSI on both sides. 42 PSI is, is just above the point of where the low side pressure switch would kick out and not allow the compressor to come on. The low side protection protection switch does not work. It waits till it's so low it's meaningless. Okay, get that through your head. It is like an idiot light on an old car that the light would come on after you blow the head gasket kind of thing. So it had 42 PSI, I turned it on. I turned it on, it operated normally, but look, we're really low on the low side now. We're zero PSI and there's these guys out there who believe that the low side pressure switch will protect the compressor and turn it off if there wasn't refrigerant in the system or not enough to do anything. So let's look at what else do you notice about my gauges here. If you've watched my other video, you know about superheat and subcooling. And you notice that SLT suction line has to do with your suction line temperature. It's 70 degrees, even though outside temperature is 57 degrees. LLT, liquid line temperature, 193 degrees. How can that be possible? Okay. This is, I did not attach to the outside of the condenser. This is the attachment point of the discharge line off the compressor. So coming out of the compressor, we have 194 degrees. The internals of the compressor, this is on the outside. But if you get down to the compression part, right at the scroll, right at the molder, it's usually about 50 to 75 degrees 
hotter than that. So we're talking way above 200 degrees, okay? This is the outlet temperature. This customer has been trying to run this compressor and use it while the discharge pressure is at this, and this is with an ambient temperature of 57 degrees. Imagine the customer keeps turning on his air conditioning when it's 80 or 90 degrees or more outside. That adds more heat load to the refrigerant and the ambient temperature is so high, there's no place for even the case of the compressor cannot even radiate off any heat. The condenser cannot radiate off any heat because if it's 90 or 100 degrees outside, you're picking up more heat. This would even be higher. And this is how compressors die. The low side, the trinary switch here is a piece of shit. It doesn't work. It does not, not unless you are out of refrigerant, below its spec to cut out would it cut off your ac there's guys on prius chat and other youtube forums say oh low pressure switches protect the system bullshit this is what i see all the time so those guys you listen to who say the systems don't leak they yes they do all have leaks they leak a little bit some more than others some develop a pre precise leak somewhere but not all leaks are constant. You can't find them when a car is just sitting idle. Some leaks only happen when lines are vibrating. The evaporator is vibrating, the hoses are vibrating, the condensers are vibrating, the body of the car is flexing, the evaporator, which is a rigid aluminum evaporator, is going through expansions and contractions and it's vibrating in the case as you're going down the road. And it could only leak at that time sometimes. So you go around with a sniffer and say this was the leak and I put my sniffer right on top of the leak, but it's not vibrating and it's one of those leaks. You won't pick up nothing and it's high on the system. So there's no oil stain, especially the ones that only leak when you turn the system off and there's no refrigerant flow. And on pressure lowering, when the pressure lowers, that particular leak only opens up when the pressure is going down. Then there's other leaks that only leak when the pressure is going up and they turn off when the pressure is going down. So if you can't understand this and grasp that, you're gonna have a hard time looking for leaks on certain vehicles that aren't there at the time that you are testing them. So this is why cars die, the presses. This has an electric motor in it. So for you that are not familiar, the difference between a regular compressor and a uh, hybrid compressor, is that this has electric motor windings. The electric motor windings are like an inductive heater. They themselves consume wattage. So if you're consuming a thousand watts, that's like a, a thousand watt household heater radiating off heat. And what do you think it relies on to cool off those heated coils of the windings of the motor? It relies on a cool mist of refrigerant coming back and cooling off the motor to keep it, give it a nice long life. But if you've been advised that you don't have to change refrigerant and charge it up, fill it up and keep it topped off so it's at its full level, every year you go down a little bit on your refrigerant, then there's not enough refrigerant to come back in this refrigerant line to carry back cooling to the compressor. But there's more than enough refrigerant to cool the evaporator to make the passenger happy. The passenger doesn't know that the compressor is suffering because you're a few ounces low on refrigerant because the passenger is happy. Compressor is not happy. Let's, let's put it that way. So this is a good indicator for some people who can understand superheat, subcooling, actually see temperatures. Oh, here's, let's do another thing. Uh, let's take a temperature. I'm going to move the suction line temperature off the suction line that's attached back there at the evaporator. I am going to move it off and I'm going to put it on the other side of this line. So I'm gonna put on a discharge of the condenser. So let's grab this line. And for ease of use, oh no, this one's missing it. And you can see a leak right there. But for ease of use, let's attach. Sorry guys, put the phone sideways. I gotta put the phone down. No. Okay, so now we're attached. 
right off the condenser. Remember, most technicians do not have a good understanding. So we're at, say we're gonna be 70 some degrees on the discharge line and condenser. Now, a technician who doesn't understand the principles of the PT chart or anything like that, which sometimes get thrown out the window when you're dealing with cars with variable compressors, or added heat loads like the electric windings. The electric windings in the compressor are adding a heat load to the refrigerant. So, for the YouTube professors and couch potato uh, engineers, go Google PT chart for R12, no, R134, not the other one, and look up at what pressure should I be reading on the high side when my discharge line of my refrigerant temperature is 195 degrees and you will see it does not jive with that number right there and remember the system is low on refrigerant but most technicians don't know this they don't understand this especially if they're new to air conditioning and they're listening to somebody telling them to use a pt chart or use an ambient plus so many degrees this is where guessing comes into the game and, uh, and this is where compressors get burnt up. So I think I've said enough on that. For you who kinda understand, you'll know where I'm going. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, you have some research to do and watch possibly some of my old videos where I keep talking about this. And I only give part of the information, I don't give all of the information. Just enough to make you dangerous and just enough to make you think you learned something, but you don't learn nothing unless you go research and study on your own. That's it for now. I'll get back to you these after these are repaired. Oh yeah, and if in my other videos, you will know why I am not taking the ambient temperature out here. I'm not using ambient temperature to con, like my delta T, my drop across the evaporator with my temp. I don't use the temperature out here because it's 57 degrees. I don't use my temperature right here because of the hot radiator and the fan and the exhaust manifold. This is at 90 degrees. I use my temperature way back here because that's at 68 degrees. Well, you go, why is this 90 degrees? Why, why is that 68 degrees? Answer that question yourself. If you can't and you've been doing temperatures and measurements all this year and you've been using this temperature, you've been way, way off. You're, you were gaining totally false readings your whole entire life. If you've been a mechanic and you were taught to use ambient temperature and you had the hood up and you're taking pressures and you're using the outside air and you want to know what your delta is across your evaporator and you've just been doing this with a gauge, you've been doing it wrong your whole life. All right, guys, once again, here I am saying I'm getting out of here. Next video.